I bet you weren't expecting an introduction like that. Threw you for a loop. So welcome back. <laughs> um, so what happened last time? Let's see. Uh, last time... Um, Right, we got a bunch of information out of Eddie, and now we're going to the graveyard to confront Tessa, the twins' mom's best friend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna go and confront her in a graveyard where she is grieving for her lost parents, I believe, which isn't exactly the best location to be bringing up such a heavy topic, but whatever, that's where we're going. Um, yeah, so I guess that's where we're at now. Um, I actually had to re-record this because I was streaming it live and, uh, my mic was turned off the whole time. I streamed for two hours and my mic was turned off. So that kind of blows. Um, <laughs> so now I'm just re-recording for you guys. Uh, yeah, so thankfully this game has it so that you can go back and replay chapters. Um, I'll just make all the same choices I made and the same commentary and yeah. So I guess here we go. Remember where she is? No. For what it's worth, I remember staring at the water during the funeral. <sighs> well... Only a few steps in, and I'm already starting to regret this. Uh, Allison, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going! <laughs> Allison, come back! <sighs> yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time, no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards, you and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. Yeah, that's where I went when I ran off. I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please, don't worry about me. Oh, he's such a good brother. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. I like how they both had different memories and you get to see both sides to the story. Good. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible. But I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. I'll be... But I'm gonna come see you every week. And we'll talk with our voice every day. Be back soon, alright? Promise. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. Both Allison's Chief memory. Brown's gonna take care of you. We'll be okay. You'll see. Kids. About to start. I'm sorry it took me so long to come back. I got so caught up in everything that... You really don't have to explain. I understand what you were going through now. Are you ever gonna let me finish my sentences? <laughs> Maybe someday. But not today. <laughs> uh, one new world again. Oh, there's Tessa. I don't really want to see her though. Can we go a different way? Yes, we can. This is the way I went last time. You think Snowball still lives in there? Snowy owls only tend to live about ten years. Oh, 
rest He's in so peace. knowledgeable. This spot's familiar. <laughs> she was really close to Eddie's mom. I remember how hard Mary and Toby when Eddie's mom died. Well, we were only four. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. You think her death kicked off Marianne's, you know? It definitely didn't help, but no. It was years later. Be right back. Yeah, all good. No dice. It's really hard on her. Not hers. Why can't I remember? Why can't I remember? There we go. Mary Ann Ronan. Allison. Is that her? What the hell was going on with you? What broke? <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? We were your goblins. <laughs> you didn't have to do it all alone. Man, I'm gonna cry. Uh, this is so sad. Tessa? Kids. I... Uh, I, I wasn't expecting to see... But what are you... What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? When we pass on, our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. We have our memories, too. Letting hers just fall apart would be cruel. I'm not a cruel person. Cruel enough to call social services on her mother. I... I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day... We were going to end up dead? Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to, to- Enough with the excuses. What the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by, and over the years she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her, and the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She, she so pushed us Ill. all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us, until you threatened to have us taken away. I couldn't let her drag you down with her. She had you stealing for God's sake. Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. She always thought she was better than the rest of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. If she just settled down with someone instead of running around with married men, well, just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? I... 
Oh God. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking, please just forget I said anything. Tessa. All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. I'm sorry, kids. You could have done that, or you were her best friend. I get that Marianne wouldn't let you help her. But there had to be a better way to deal with it. Especially if she was having some kind of crisis. Yes, you're right. There were other things I could have done. Better things. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. No, don't. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. Oh. I pray for guidance. And seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man. I think I have his answer. That means a lot to me. Aww. Thank you. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Tyler? It's rude not to forgive her. She's clearly a suffering, and although she did a lot wrong, she was thinking about them in their best interest. They've lost a lot of people already. I'm done losing people. And if we can't let people grow, then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Thank you. Both of you. Kids. I never knew your mother's whole story, but it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. Aww. There gonna be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I think there just might be. I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. Aww. Come on. That was sweet. That was something, huh? Yeah, it was. I had pretty much given up on her, but I guess sometimes people change. I know. I feel like a total ass right now. Did she need to hear it all? You shouldn't. She needed to hear all of that. Yeah, you're probably right. Still, I... Might bring in a peace offering my first day back. Any ideas? Uh, Jesus stuff? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'll just finally bring back that book I borrowed six months ago. What is that, a swan? What is that? He's wearing a hat. I don't know, can I sit? There we go. Not a bad view, right? Yeah. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Just gonna test to make sure that this is still recording after what happened earlier. Okay, it is. <laughs> Proceed. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Thanks for coming with Listen, me. Listen, I know this has been hard. I'm really grateful you saw it through with me. Fireweed was great, but there was no one really there for me like that. You know? You're the only one. Hey. Brothers and sisters. Right. But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately. Which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait. 
Are you still blaming yourself for that? The opportunity Don't. To... It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. You needed time to heal. You were just dealing with what happened the way that you needed to, alright? As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house, and you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. Everyone no. deals with their own shit their own We way. never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, <laughs> he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. You hear? For sure. And anyway, that's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. So I want him to go live we with do. Michael and Allison. So I guess we know the story now. They'd be such a cute huh? couple. Michael Marianne and was done with Delos, and Delos was done with her. Maybe she was too proud, but she worked so hard for so long. And when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she... She... Gave up. But killed her kids? Really? Something's not adding up. Still feels like there's something missing, right? Yeah, something's missing. Some piece to the puzzle. You're never gonna understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she didn't. It's probably always going to feel that way. Oh, I'm going to fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Shit. Shit. Allison. I'll get the fire extinguisher. What was that? The Mad Hunter? Tyler! Tyler, are you alright? Uh, Allison, Barn. Stay there. I got it. Apparently wants me to go in the barn first instead of chasing after whoever that psycho was there, that set was the fire. A, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. What guy? What did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight and and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? I don't know. <sighs> but I'm going to find out. So, did Eddie teach you how to put out a fire? Nope. I taught myself. Did he really have to smash everything? I might have found something. He went looking under Oops. the rug? Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So, he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? Maybe a tool shed? God. I really turned this place upside down. This gas can was already here this morning. He didn't bring it with him. Haha. <laughs> At least you were spared. 
How many do we have left? Right, I missed one, so we'll have to try and find that. I already had that one. Asshole even dumped the drawers. There it goes. So oh, many valuable stuff's missing. I guess we know how he made the hole. Step back. I'll be fine. Clearly Marianne put that there. Well, I only know one person who'd bother to decorate a storage box like this. <laughs> Marianne. Let's open it. Three digits. Any ideas? Mm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. What's that there? Some kind of carving. Not sure what it is, though. An eye. Said to look in here. Ah, there's the Wait. symbol. Look, it's the same symbol. The secret keeper. Well, let's see if we can find any numbers. Now, I actually did find the numbers for this after a long search. I finally had to Google it, and it was so simple. But I will read the story to you so that you at least hear it. Once upon a time in the deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblin spied on the secret keeper as she made her rounds, gathering up secrets that the animals of the forest had for sale. How, said the first goblin, does she get people's secrets? Do you suppose she peels open their heads? Let's find out, said the second, and so the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched until the stalwart moose came to her, head hanging low. It was my fault. I chose the uneven trail. I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into stalwart moose's eyes. Though the goblins couldn't hear anything, they knew she was speaking to the moose the secret keeper spoke in people's minds with the gift of the voice. After a few minutes, the stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter, said the moose. Did I just give you something? The secret keeper nodded, handing him a coin. The stalwart moose nodded and plodded along down the trail. He spied the goblins hiding in the woods and narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently, and the moose was forced to carry on because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what the secret was, said one of the goblins. Let's go buy it. So the goblins approached the secret keeper before she could say, stow away moose's secret. We want to buy moose's secret. What do you have to trade? asked the secret keeper. Her voice filling their minds. The goblins produced a silver-handled hairbrush they had stolen from the princess and the secret keeper nodded, and that is how the goblins came to know that Moose's mate had tumbled down a cliffside to her death. Moose. The Moose was mate. So that sounds like Sam, because his wife left him. So maybe that's his mate, tumbled down the cliff. Not, not literally, just that she left him. The secret keeper moved on. The first of the goblins said, I want to know more. So the goblins followed the secret keeper, hoping to find where she hid the secrets. They followed her to the peak of a nearby ridge and watched as she stowed the rest of the day's secrets high in a cloud. When she had gone, they climbed a high spruce tree that disappeared into the misty sky. They reached out and just managed to dip their hands into the clouds. Their heads were filled with memories, and they snatched their hands back out as if they had just thrust them in boiling water. Tears poured down their cheeks. That was how the secret keeper found them, crying in the tree. You stole my secrets, see the secret keeper. Give them back. The crafty goblins stopped crying because they saw an opportunity. What will you give us in exchange? They asked. I will give you back the silver-handled hairbrush, offered the secret keeper. For so many secrets? Pfft, you'll have to offer more than that. What if? said the secret keeper. I shared the gift of voice. 
The crafty goblins grew excited. That will do. So the secret cave keeper shared the gift of voice with the goblins, and immediately they found that they could hear one another's thoughts and feel each other's feelings. So she knew that they had twin telepathy. Because she's the one that wrote these, right? The crafty goblins gave back the secrets they had taken and ran back to the big wooden house. There they found the princess preparing food. They tried to peer into her mind, but they found it was a blank. They tried to speak to her using only their own minds, but they, but she could not hear them. It seemed the secret keeper was craftier than the crafty goblins, for she had only shared enough of her power to let the goblins use the gift of voice with each other, and not with the whole of the forest. And that is how the goblins stole the gift of voice from the secret keeper, but why they could only use it with each other. Now, I found out the secret as to finding out what the code is. I had to Google it after looking for a good maybe 10 to 15 minutes trying to find throughout the Book of Goblins for an answer. I'm a little embarrassed, but uh, there's number one. Three. Zero. Like, it's... It was that simple. That simple. And I missed it. Oh well, we know it now. 130, right? That did it. Lots of reading coming up. Okay. I, I need think she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. Dear Marianne, I need to see you again. I know how that sounds, and I don't want you to think I chase after all the new girls in Dallas Crossing. I've always taken my vows seriously, but something changed when I met you. When we're together, I feel like I'm doing 80 down the highway with my lights off, and I never want to stop. I know it isn't right, and we both have a lot to lose, but I need to be with you again. I hope you feel the same. Heart symbol. Aww. Oh. P.S. I bought you a little something for next time. I can't wait to see how it looks on you. Fuck. That's rough. This this guy tried to push Mary in to get an abortion. Oh even shit. Even though she wanted to keep us. Okay, well we didn't read that yet. Thanks, Tyler. Marianne, I'm sorry you're in this situation. I know you feel you'd make a great mother, and I don't doubt you will someday, but right now we have to be sure we don't ruin three lives. My marriage hasn't been happy for some time, but she doesn't deserve this. But mostly I'm worried about you. People here talk, and I don't want you to have to go through that. I know money has been tight, but I'll do what I can to help you do the right thing. Just let me know how much you need. Wow. That's, uh... Sorry, my nose runs itchy. That's, uh, that's rough. That he wanted her to do that. I mean, she's clearly mentally ill. What a mess. it's really hard to raise a kid when you're mentally ill. But, let alone two. But, uh, that's not cool to ask her to do that. And that was Sam. The drunk. Who was always so clearly That's in love everything. with Marianne. What the hell? So, Marianne hid a box under the barn. A box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. He turned the whole place upside down and didn't take anything. All he wanted was that box. And he was willing to burn down the barn to get rid of what was inside. You know what it all means, right? Yep. That guy had an affair with Marianne. And he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. Is it outside or is it inside? Gotta be outside. Get out of my way, Allison. Jeez. Oops. <laughs> Allison! Uh, Allison! Not 
this memory. Why are we seeing this? I don't know about you, but I haven't forgotten anything about that night. I would have said the same thing, but something felt different. I need to see the rest. But you know what happens down there. That's the thing. I'm not sure I do. <sighs> All right. Let's go. Some kind of work boot. Maybe fishing boots? Every time, Cat. Every time. Every time. Get down. Down. Get no. Get down. Get down. Oh, jeez. Oh. So heavy. Man. Just stop. Stop. This is a serious moment. Okay. Serious face. Got sparkliness. This is where I trip. Mad Hunter! Wait, there was someone here that night? In the woods? No, it was just, I, I saw, who the hell did I actually see? Damn. He ran straight for it. No stops, no turns. He was on a mission. Was there someone over there? The Mad Hunter. The Mad Hunter! What? No. That... That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait, he was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on. Do you feel that? Trail ends here. It looks like he jumped into the gully. Hey, are there footsteps on the other side? Yeah. That must be where he climbed out. Well, he's long gone. Yeah, I can't go down there. He really didn't want us to figure out who he was. Well, he's been avoiding us for 20 years, so. Did you see a car anywhere on the way home? Nope. He must have gone off-road. I guess it makes sense why he was able to get in and out so fast. Yeah. He must have been out here visiting Marianne. Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock, about us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? What if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take she that chance. She has PTSD. I mean, they both probably do. But do we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock. Oh, don't, don't guilt trip her. Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. What? How... How... How can you say that to me? Aww. I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, 
to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? God, I, I don't know. Allison. I'll do it. Let's go. Allison's so brave. Come on, Allison. Focus. Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet! Don't want Mom to catch us out of bed. You. I told you that would happen. We almost had it, though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? Don't think about anything else. I'll... I'll try. Come on, Allison. You can do it. You too, Tyler. Shut. I don't owe you anything. You've been a little all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. I'm sorry that I'm done that's it you're just giving up just like that well, they're right in the you very can't do this we owe her mom. Marianne is gone Tyler and nothing we do is gonna change that don't go please you can't keep running from this alley or it's only gonna get worse. I don't owe you anything. Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet. We don't want mom to catch us out of bed. There's no money. I've never asked you for anything, but right now they need you. It's not gonna happen. I've got everything I need to nail your ass in that barn. And just what do you think happens after that? <sighs> what do you mean? Well, if those kids have a father, do you really think there's a court out there that'll let you keep them? No! You have no claim to my children! Get the hell off my property, now! If you ever come back here, I'm going to kill you! Allison? <laughs> 